First, the first thing I did wrong was I left my treats behind. Yeah, didn't think there would be ice anywhere. This is the trail. It's ice. <laughs> Gonna have to walk along the side here and be careful. Lesson learned. Let's go. You wouldn't believe that this is normally peak winter in Minnesota. Look at this. Not even any snow to talk about. Look at that. Sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. It's 40 degrees. Ridiculous, that's what I say. This is not winter. This is spring already. And it's the end of January. What is going on? This is actually a, a pretty cool park. There's a bunch of trails out here, a lot to see. Just not what I was expecting for winter. There's literally no snow left. Can't even go ice fishing because th there's like an inch of water on top of the ice. Horrible. This is, this is not right. Oh well, what do you do? Well, you trudge. As you can see, this is Big Woods. It's a state park. Minnesota State. It's very popular. Like I said, a lot of trails and some very cool stuff to see any time of the year. You can come here and walk the trails. Like I said, I didn't plan very well. I was stuck in the cottage, got a late start, grabbed everything. Well, most things. Here we are, unprepared and all. There's some cool stuff to see here. You can see there's a small stream here. Still got ice on it, but it's melting. You can uh, see down there. It is so, I'm shocked. It's still a good place to walk, even at this time of the year, when things aren't going as planned. I'm outdoors, can't beat that. Let's go look for stuff. So that stream I was showing you that was kind of not so much iced over anymore comes down here and yeah right over a small waterfall here well it's a pretty cool waterfall let's go check it out That's pretty cool. <laughs> Which one is that? This is called the Avada, a DJI Avada. Oh, the DJI? Yeah. Okay. So this is the falls and you can see, obviously it's iced over. You can hear the water running. It's actually running quite a lot, which means the ice is melting a lot. And it, you know, the, the river goes down. Um, these people here, I've got to be careful what, I've, <laughs> what I show. And you can hear the water. I'll try and get a little closer. And hopefully you can see that. The water running down there. It's, it's really pretty to see. And on a day like this, it's really nice. You know, when you come here in the dead of winter, when we have our normal winters, Everything is covered in snow. You don't see as much as you see now. It's very cool.
Don't know about you, but I need a cup of coffee and let's go find some way to have a look at that knife. Huh, what's this? Huh. No idea what that is. Huh. Apparently it's some little guy's swim trunks from summer. Whoops. Oh well. Gonna have to take that in and put it by the ranger station. Can't leave it here. Wow, I found a spot. I forgot that here you're not allowed to leave the trail. They really enforce it. One of the reasons is they're having issues with different species being invading here and this is a preserve. So they don't like you to wander off the trail. They can keep control of it. You never know what you're going to bring in on your boots or whatever. So I took a long hike around. I'm at one of the, the little picnic spots here close to the campground. Let's have a look at this knife and we'll even try and make some coffee. No guarantees though, because everything's wet. Okay, we got the water boiling, barely. <laughs> I had to hunt around for some sticks and put it in my bush box. I had to use their fireplace. I can't do it outside the fireplace. So while the water boils, I got something to show you. This actually arrived about two weeks ago from a subscriber, actually a friend and a fellow YouTuber. And you probably know him, and that's the Knife Doctor. If you haven't seen his channel, check it out here. Yeah interesting very cool great channel very knowledgeable on how to fix knives he sent me a, a text saying i just sent you something i think you need to have a look at this and let me know what you think think you'll like it what he sent was this yeah an essay right i was shocked these things are not cheap <laughs> not that i don't appreciate it big guy wow Anyway, I thought I'd share it with you. And this is actually the ESP LSPE Strike Black with a Makata handle, black Kydex sheath. I had a quick look at it. It is considered a survival knife. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with SE. This one, like I said, is the, is the laser strike is what they call it. So let's have a quick look at it. The box is pretty cool. Look at that. Got a bunch of information on survival and tips on how to do things if you're in trouble. And uh, things like determining distance traveled, using topo maps, ground distress signals, all that sort of stuff. Pretty cool on the back there. Good information. So let's have a look at this beast. Like I said, it is a survival knife. Here it is in the plastic. Get it out for you. Here it is here. Look at this thing. It's huge. It's got this uh, black kydex sheath and a lanyard on it. Well, yeah, a lanyard, I suppose you'd call it. 
this thing hanging below here and interestingly enough it has this little washer on it but we'll get into that like i said kaides sheath makata handle very nice i like the texture on this very cool they also something that they did is they put a little divot in here you see that yeah so here it is here look at this guy <laughs> nice look at this blade very nice and of course it says made in the usa and has a 17955 i'm not sure what that is if it's a serial number or anything like that it just if you see at the bottom there it says rowan and it says the se ls which i assume stands for laser strike with the se badge on it um, not particularly fond of things on my blade but this is very well done it's it's etched but you can hardly feel it black blade you can see there and it has that cleaned up edge and yeah <laughs> sharp very nice very nice knife so like it says it comes with the kydex sheath this thing is solid it's huge and it's going to take a lot to break <laughs> you will notice it does not come with anything to attach it to but they have this which is in a separate bag which means you got to put it together the way you want it you would mount it the way you like it it has a bunch of uh, screws and nuts and things in the bag i've got to be careful i don't drop none here and here is the clip and basically you're gonna attach this to your knife now you can see here where the blades the knife sits in there and that's where it clips in so when you attach it they give you an angle on it here uh, obviously you want to keep this in that curve there fits very nice but it does give you an option uh, a nice solid clip on it a big heavy duty steel clip very nice um, i believe this is the kydex as well that it's made of put it on your sheath and you'd be ready to rock and roll that would go on your belt or if you don't want to do that leave that off and just tie it to your pack me personally i like to have a nice big knife on my my belt so that's where this would go for me here is the knife here and then as you can see it right away you can see it's a spear point a pretty good knife for survival that's a good blade for survival you want that spear point it's pokey you can make a spear out of it obviously the name comes here. you can put mount this on a, a, a stick and use it as a spear to defend yourself to hunt with the blade is a beast look how thick that guy is the, the steel that they use is 1095, which is a really solid, solid steel. Can't go wrong with that. It's got some jimping here, the Makata handle, and very plain. I like the idea of just nothing fancy on it. Very plain, very, very grippy, very nice. It actually fits my hand really well. <laughs> Unusual for me. It does have a lanyard hole. Now, it is a survival knife. And I wondered about that, and then I saw, first of all, the first thing I saw was this divot here in the handle. What that's for, yeah, put it on the ground, put your sticky in there, and you're spinning. Bow drill, you use your bow drill hole right there on the handle for you. Great idea, great idea. This will sit on the top of your bow drill, and you spin it back and forth, and you get your wood going, you got a fire. And that's one way to use it. The other way, which took me a while to figure out, is I was reading the description, and it is full tang. You can see there, but the tang is skeletonized. Style, I don't know what the correct wording for it is. You can take these handles off, which I'll do for you, and inside is a small ferroid, some tinder. So, you know, that's part of survival. You expect that there. I'm, I'm not sure I like the idea of it inside the handle, very easy to lose your screws and stuff and then you're up the creek i would rather have seen ferro rod on the sheath before you all shout at me i'm not that familiar with sc and i'm pretty sure they'll have sheaths like that where you can put attachments on it still a solid knife this thing's got some weight to it 9.5 ounces i'm not sure if that's with the sheath i would think that's the whole thing there 
right there with it, which is not bad for this bigger knife. That's not a bad weight. So let's have a look at some quick specs on it. For you. Like I said, this is called the Laser Strike. I know they have a bunch of different models. Um, I like this one. I really do. I'm very impressed with this nice thick blade. Thickness of the blade 0.18, 188 exactly. So it's pretty healthy. Uh, the length of the blade from the tip here to the handle, I would assume, 4.75 inches. Very solid. A nice size. A little big for a bushcraft knife, but this is not a bushcraft knife. Although you could use it, I'm pretty sure, for a lot of bushcraft chores. It is a survival knife, so it's got to be able to do that. The handle length, five and a quarter inches. Nice size. And you've got that up close. You see this here? I, I'm not a big fan of choking up, but when they do this, it makes me feel a lot comfortable that my hand is not going to slip onto the blade. I'm always worried about that. It does have a little, nice little choil there. Right there you can see it and the jimping on the top. This is a, a beautiful blade. I got it. I just, <laughs> it's impressive. The overall length of this thing is 10 inches. It's not a tiny guy. So uh, some pretty good size and specs on this thing. I want to try it out on a couple of things and uh, see what it can do. We'll do some really basic stuff. I was, uh, uh, I found a stick when I was out there walking. <laughs> a little oh, nice walking stick but I can't really take it with me I can't take it out of the park so just use it to try out the knife I think my fire went out but I think the water's hot enough for a cup of coffee wait one oh yeah hot oh coffee 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 Ugh. excuse me while I make me a cup of coffee quickly gotta say that it is a beautiful day today the good day for coffee not too cold, just right actually, so can't complain about that. <laughs> All right, here we go, coffee. Got to get going for the review. Art. This lanyard thingy here, when I first looked at it, I thought, what is this washer for? Had no idea. And then I realized I don't have a screwdriver. How am I going to open the handle? Yeah, you got it. The handle, it's got screws both sides, and what you can do is you're going to use the washer as your screwdriver. See that? It's going to fit right in there and you can take off. It's not going to be easy because they're on there tight, but there it goes. You can unscrew it just like that. Nervous about dropping the nuts and bolts here. <laughs> Let me get a more for you. Listen, the more I can use my thumb now, I think. Or my nail. <laughs> they were in there tight, but you can get them out. You don't want them obviously loose because the handle will come loose. So losing the screws, you can have the, see they have the little ferrule on it. And then we can take the handle off. And you can see right there in here is some fire starters, some cotton balls that have been uh, put inside a little slot there. And then you have Your ferro rod right there see that very cool i don't know if it'll strike no strike have to keep oh oh huh this edge is not clean at all well look what we have this wash is becoming very very handy there can you see it i'm getting i gotta clean it off get that protection off but I'm getting a strike there I looked on the knife and I couldn't find anywhere to strike it but you got a ferro rod and there'll be a way to strike it I'm wondering if this is magnesium I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with it that goes in there I'm gonna leave it in there because why I want to use the knife so I'm gonna put the handle back on I'm still looking for a sharp edge not sure how I'd want to do that. I'd like to make a sharp edge here. I'm missing something. I'm going to put this back together. Really nervous about losing stuff here. And because I'm in the middle of nowhere, I'd be very upset. <laughs> Let me put it back together. Okay. Got it all back together, thank goodness, and I didn't even lose a screw yet. <laughs> that was pretty handy, and I'm pretty impressed with this idea. 
that's very cool so that's a handy thing to have and of course this here I'm not sure about that whole striking thing and I should have looked into that I didn't I wanted it out of the box I didn't want to have spent any time on it before I really looked at it this is a nice knife I'm gonna leave the sheath uh, unattached right now to the uh, to the actual clip I'm gonna put everything away because I'm really nervous about losing these screws and nuts and bolts so I'm gonna put that back in there put it away in a safe place so I don't lose anything should have thought about that before I came but you know what it's an unboxing and a review and a very cool thing to do it with coffee cool down mm. a bit <laughs> so let's give this guy a test see what it can do so I've got my this uh, stick that I found and uh, you know I'm on a table so the camera is gonna bounce but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking you know Wow, okay, that's chopping right into that, look at that, this thing, it's like an axe, catch it, it's as good, it's got that weight, and this is not really that soft wood either, look at that, wow, let's see, you know, it's, it's not really a bushcraft knife because of the blade length, but still, it's got good handling on it, I mean, I'm... I can carve somewhat with it. You're not going to do any delicate carving. I suppose you did. If you choke up like that, you could make some del delicate things. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to... Let's cut this wood. I'm not going to use the knife. I'm not a big fan of it. But I want to... Of, of battening. Bludgeoning, as I call it. And apparently saying that really people get upset <laughs> but it's battening is the correct name I don't want to do that right now I'm gonna use it to batten but while we have this piece of wood I thought well it's a survival knife you should be able to make yourself some sort of tool to help you while you're surviving so let's give that a go <laughs> Not sure what kind of wood it is, but you get the idea. Once I make it, what I'm looking at, you want to get really hard wood, would be better. So I got me a piece of wood. What I did, if you saw, I just roughly measured it. Three hand lengths for me. You want to give yourself a little bit of distance from that, the mallet head. Otherwise you might catch your finger or something when you're battening. So what I want to do, obviously, first is let's get it all cleaned off. We don't want all this ugly stuff on it. Anything feels pretty solid up there. We'll look for the better side to make the mallet head, obviously. It's going to put a circular, mark it around. Now I'm going to just find another piece of wood just to batten into your... I suppose I could use the saw. Let's use the saw. I'm going to dig in to get the mallet head. And all I'm going to do... Make that mark go around about the same depth all the way around if you're wondering why I'm using the saw because it's about this knife it is about the knife but I don't go anywhere without a folding saw at least in my pocket okay so we got that cut there and then the idea is to make your handle So if I just cut, I'm using this as a stop cut, and I'm just cutting right in there. Let me stand up and get some weight behind me here. And all I'm going to do is cut back on it. And some of it we was lying in the snow, not that great. But 
but it is a hard wood for sure you can see that and I know this knife is sharp so all I'm gonna do is clean it up like that all the way down my battery is getting low so I'm gonna just do that now and uh, just clean back here and then let's test it I've cleaned most of it off you don't want to make it too thin because then you're weakening it now you're asking me why I a mallet well it's really easy to show you and it's a handy thing to have you're gonna to need to prep fire and things like that so you're gonna need some wood prep the wood you need fire starter you're gonna break your wood down and that's what this is really survival knife like I said it has a fire starter and everything in it it's solid and it'll do as a camp knife survival knife and you could probably get away with a bushcraft knife except the blades a little too long why this? Well, I'm going to bludgeon with it. All right, batten with it. And I'm going to need it to prep wood for the fire. Look at that nasty wood again, but hey. Oh, hold on. Look at that. Bam. No problem at all. Wood for feather sticks that guy. Let's try and make another one. That guy. So, heh, to be honest, I'd have no problem battening this. Obviously within reason. You don't want to abuse a knife. Will it make a feather stick? Let's see. Oops, broke it, but no problem there. I mean, nice coils. This wood's not very strong though, but you can see it certainly will feather, no problem. So this, this is gonna do all the chores you need to survive. I'd have no problem now that I've got coffee all over. It's a work knife. That's what they're made for. And, you know, like I said, using this to batten it, it's the thickness of that blade, 1095 steel. I'd have no problem battening with it. And I'm not a big fan of that. And you saw it feather just fine. You can do some basic carving. It'll make the tools that you want. So there you go. Look at that. The Essie very nice i i'm i'm loving this knife <laughs> and i can see why they're popular that's a solid solid knife i'd recommend this guy or probably if they all like this to anybody on any knife from essie they are made in the usa they designed and made Jenna. and i believe it is rowan manufacturing that makes them for essie you see i tend to grab a knife like that but if I want to choke up, I can. I don't have to worry about that divot. And you know what? That'll give you more control when you're doing your, your carvy stuff. So, you know, it's, it's a USA-made knife. And if that's the way you feel about buying, purchasing, and you want to stay in the USA, this is why people do it. How much did I pay for this? Well, you know, it was sent to me as a gift for me to try out and have a look. The knife doctor. I, I can't believe he sent me this because I looked up the pricing and I'm gonna say on this guy here this model is the only one I looked up and it ranged in about an average of about 125 bucks that much well you know what I gotta say it's worth it but unfortunately you know I, I choose to be on a budget for a reason I'm semi-retired I made that decision to spend that kind of money on a knife it's hard for me to Loving this knife. What can I say? Huh? Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back.
with another sharp and shiny probably been working on a couple of different things but this became a priority for me this is a really really nice knife and i wanted to share it with you you will be safe out there especially with a knife like this this is a solid knife and you can hurt yourself if you're not careful always practice safety when whatever you're doing when you're using a sharp and shine even when you're making your tools well my battery's about to die i've got to finish my coffee which is getting cold hmm. kind of <laughs> really appreciate you guys watching been a tough week for me had a lot of stuff going on couldn't get out to the videos and that sort of thing i know the knife doctor has been waiting for me to have a look at this guy so hopefully he's happy now thanks for watching it's always appreciated see you again soon Bye.